Hey there, welcome back. This is Jamie and we're going to be still working in chapter two uh, where we're creating distributions from data. And in this example, we're going to be making frequency distributions when the data is quantitative. Um, and quantitative or numerical data is more or less uh, data that we can do math on, right? 14 is one less than 15. We can add, subtract, divide these numbers and we end up with a meaningful result. So we're going to try to put these numbers in groups. Right? This, what we've been given, is times how long it took to do an audit. And so we'd like to know how many audits were relatively short, say 10 to 14 days, and how many were long, like more than 30. So when we're creating our histogram, the first place we need to start is just getting some basic understandings of the data. The thing we need to know first is the minimum and the maximum values because we need to make sure that every value in our data is included in the histogram, right? So I'm just going to double check by calculating the minimum and calculating the maximum. And when we see that the values are, has a minimum of 12 and a maximum of 33, I know that my smallest grouping has to include the number 12 and my largest grouping has to include the number 33. So when I first started making histograms, this is how I started. Eventually when you're comfortable, you'll be able to leave out this first column that I make, but I recommend including it when you first start. So I start with a column that I call numbers in bin, right? This is the range of numbers that each bin is going to include. I put an apostrophe there just so Excel doesn't think that I'm entering a date or trying to do math, but I want that first bin to include the numbers 10 to 14. That's five numbers, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And I'm going to go up by five until I get a bin that includes this largest value. So my next one's going to be 15 to 19. That's a 19, can't you tell? 15 to 19, 20 to 24. 25 to 29, and 30 to 34. This gives us five bins that will include both the largest and the smallest value. So here, this next column, I'm just going to call it bin. These are going to be the Excel bins, and this is the information that we'll use to tell Excel what the bins are. So to make sense of this, we have to understand the, the workings of Excel, right? What is it? What is Excel thinking, as it were? When we are trying to get frequencies that correspond with these bins, what we need to realize is that Excel, you need to put the smallest bin on the bottom, the way we've done, so we've organized them smallest to largest. And the number that we place in each bin, Excel will collect the values that are smaller than that. So here in the first bin, because we can really theoretically go from 0 to 14 because we know there's nothing smaller than 12, we just put in the number 14. So this will give us, it will return all values less than 14. In the next row, we're going to choose the highest we're going to choose the upper bound of the bin number at 19. And when we ask Excel for the frequency, it will return everything between 14 and 19. So it will return 15 to 19. It will return what's in there. So I'm going to go up, placing in this column the largest number in the bin corresponding on the left. And then in the next column, I'm going to call it frequency. So pause there if you want to get caught up, because this next stage is where people tend, it gives people grief. Um, I had to do this 10 times before I got it the first time, so just take the deep breath and count how many tries it takes you. Um, sometimes I find that that helps. Anyway, so to do the frequency column, we highlight the entire section where the frequency distribution is going to go. Right? It has to look like that. And then when it's all highlighted like that, you just start typing the function equals frequency. And it goes into the cell where you want it. And then it starts to boss you around and it says data array and bins array. Well, the data is here, right? This is the data. 
and we want to know the frequency where the data of that data, how it fits into these bins. And even though it says 14, it means less than 14. And even though it says 19, it means between 14 and 19. And then you close the parentheses and you don't hit enter. You hit, whether you're on a Mac or a PC, control, shift, enter. And it will fill that up. There's our frequency distribution. You might have to pause it and try it again. Uh, but come back when you're ready because the next thing we're going to do is in all one step, we're just going to give ourselves the relative frequency distribution and the percent frequency distribution. I'm going to need to format these by wrapping the text and centering them. And now to do our relative frequency, we need to figure out what our number of observations is. I'm going to sum these up, but then I'm just going to double check by counting these. Right, so there's 20. That's a way to check that you didn't make a mistake. I mean, it can't guarantee that there were no mistakes, but it, if those numbers are off, you certainly would have made a mistake. So. The relative frequency for that first bin is 4. So there are four observations between 10 and 14. I'm going to use an absolute reference on my number of observations because I want that denominator to stay constant as I drag the cells down. And then my percent frequency is just the relative frequency multiplied by 100. I can highlight both of those and double click in the corner and that will fill out my frequency distribution. So now I can see that 40% of our values, 40% of the time, our audit took between 15 and 19 days. So that's about what we would call probably a normal audit. And for the most part we could see that the majority of cases are less than 24 days to do an audit. However, there are a few cases, 10% take 25 to 29 days, and then there are some, 5%, that actually take quite a long time, as many as 33 days. So if this were our firm, we would say, well, for the most part, we're doing pretty well and staying less than 24 days, but let's investigate what's going on with these longer audits and see what's taking so long and maybe we could reduce that time. Anyway, uh, happy calculating and let me know if you have any questions.